What's up, everyone? I know it's been a long time, like, needless to say, but, you know, whatever. We here, we back. Man, I got so much to tell y'all, but right now I'm running late for the gym. I'm about to meet one of my clients there. She's going to give me a little bit of push today. Um, we're doing pull, but she's going to give me a push because I'm hurting right now because I'm low calorie. So right now I'm just mixing my intra, some glutamine, some EAAs. Some hydraulic by Action Sledge. You know what I'm saying? Some creatine HCL. But no, so I am four weeks and five days from North Americans where I look to get that pro card. You know what I'm saying? So I'm looking to, and I don't want to like, you know what I'm saying? I want to under promise and over deliver. So I'm going to say I'm going to commit to one video a week on here for y'all and then we will take it from there all right so i'm about to go ahead and get this mixed up and then get on the road and i will see y'all there peace we're probably gonna do four sets try to put some blood in the muscle nothing crazy everything's crazy to me. Just so y'all know, I held the record pair silent basic training for pull-ups for eight years. Just so y'all know. Not anymore. Way back when. I had to throw it out there. See, I can look and I can tell she's using all back. Again, a lot of people go wrong with this movement because they engage too much with, your, with their forearms and their biceps. You want to isolate as much back as possible. Right, we're going to move on. Alright, so we're going to do an old school move. Uh, that's why Ali doesn't know what we're about to do. But we're about to do barbell rows. And this was a staple that built my back. Everybody always asks me, how did you build your back? Pull-ups, barbell rows. Staples, right? So, I know like in the whole Gymshark era, these kids kind of get away from that and do all this little pulley shit and one arm shit and all that which is cool but nothing's gonna build your back quicker and more efficiently get that dense that big dense back and do a barbell row or movement like that so make sure that you add something like whether it be a t-bar row barbell row or something that's compound to your back if you want to grow your back Make a different angle I'm trying to get a different angle right now so the lights kind of shit here there we go. Now I don't like I'm fresh off the ship. Can't even fucking see me. I'm so black. Actually, all right, there we go. Please don't cancel me. Don't cancel my YouTube channel. Just have a sense of humor. Five weeks, baby. Come on. There you go. There you go. Come on. 
Come on. Work for it. Good. Good. Cool. Yep. All right, you good. So we're gonna do this chest supported row. If you're really trying to, you know, not tax your CNA, um, you know, if you're in prep, it's a good movement to do. Obviously it's chest supported, so you don't have a lot of uh, pressure in your lower back. Um, I like doing it from home <laughs> and I'm in prep, so that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna do like three sets-ish, depending on how I feel. Uh huh. He's scared. I got you. It's heavy and wood. Look. Good. There you go. I got you. Good. Good. Oh. There you go. Good. Good. No, I didn't like that. Oh, it's so heavy. Well, it's not only heavy, but it also restricts you too because you can't have any extra movement, momentum, or nothing. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go up a little bit and wait. We're gonna see what we can do. That's far. So, another thing I see a lot of people do, and I've, I've done it in the past as well, is. You start feeling sorry for yourself in prep and you say, I'm going to do higher reps and lower weight just because you're in prep instead of pushing it with all you have and the weight is just naturally going to decline because of your strength levels. You don't feel sorry for yourself and just, oh, I'm going to lift lighter because I'm in prep. Now, of course, don't be dumb and injure yourself and do d dumb shit like do PRs and shit, but don't feel sorry for yourself. You know, try to push it within reason. She was something heavy. True story. The first time I ever came to this gym, there was a 45 on each side, and I was trying to lift, I thought it was broken. And I, I went and got somebody, I'm like, this machine's broken. And they're just like, <laughs> no, you can't lift it. I was like, what the fuck? And I took it off and I was like, that didn't look that heavy. You know, she was coming up and engaging her back. That's something else that's very important. Um, and especially if you're new to like really trying to get that engagement, come up and do a slight pause and squeeze. Uh, it helps to have a pump beforehand. You know, and that we call it sending signal. So we'll do something like, like earlier we did assisted uh, pull-ups to get blood in that muscle, and therefore sending signal to the muscle. And when we move on to do a compound lift, that part of the muscle will take over because when you walk into the gym, your body doesn't know it's back day, it doesn't know it's push day, it just knows, oh shit, I need to get this weight off of me. So it will, it will recruit any type of muscle fiber to get it off of you. That's the reason why it's important to send signal to that area. All right, so we're gonna do, finish up the lat pull downs for back and moving the biceps short and sweet, nothing crazy, you know what I'm saying? I told you I just wanted to touch it a little bit, so. I'm gonna do about three or four sets of this. Just get to finish off that pump and that back.
Say hi to YouTube. Well, not, you're out of frame now. Oh, you were filming this whole time? Yes. <laughs> oh. I'm like over here trying to introduce you. I'm like, oh, shit. And then like, you didn't come over. I'm just like, well, shit, now I look like an asshole. I'm in the zone. I'm in the zone, YouTube. Yes. <laughs> I've never seen you just stand. It's super white. I was looking back at pictures and I was like four weeks out. I was like, I was vastly white. Like, I can tell you that. Oh I'm like, God. all right, I so didn't look. Even realize how white I am. So look, I told her, I'm like, make sure you tan. Right? I'm like, make sure you tan before the show to get a base coat. So you don't have to put so many coats on. She gets to the I fucking to show. Four. They had to put four coats of tan on. <laughs> yeah, let's learn about that. There you go, good. Back still looks insane. Good. Cool. Cool. Go all the way up, all the way up. There you go. Cool. Good. Good. Perfect. Come on. Good. Ooh. That's it. All right, so now we're just gonna finish up with doing four sets of curls. Simple and sweet. In the head. All right, everyone. So uh, I know it's been a long time, but nevertheless, we are back on YouTube and I want to make this, you know, definitely a, a regular thing, at least once a week. Like I said, I don't want to overpromise, but once a week, I feel like I can bang that out. Four weeks, five days out, four days actually now. It's been a struggle, man. I'm not going to lie. Like some days I have really good days. Some days I don't. And um, I think the biggest difference this time is the reasoning behind me doing this and it was really just because I wanted to say hey I wanted to do a prep that I gave my my all my everything and I wanted to have a prep where I mastered each day and like fuck the show at first like the show will um kind of be a a side effect of, of the work I put in from a day-to-day -day basis um like Hunter Labrada would say winning the day like that's why I wanted to focus on while simultaneously being a better father, significant other, um, manager at my job, coach, um, because that's life. So I can't put everything else on hold because I choose to get ready for a bodybuilding show. 
But now I wanted to embrace that challenge. Before, I was like, I'd make excuses. Well, I have this going on. Well, I have that going on. Even my personal life, well, I'm in prep, so I can't do this. I'm about to take my kids to a theme park next week. And usually I would never do that this close to a show. But I'm like, you know what? I'm a fucking man, and I need to start acting like one. So I'm going to endure to have time with my kids and make sure that they have fun. And they're not going to be worried about dad being on prep. Fuck that. Uh, so it just so happens that with that mentality coming into this, I'm, I'm, I look the best I ever have. Granted, I'm flat right now, and that's hard mentally to deal with when you see yourself and you're super flat. But um, I look the best that I ever have. I'm going to be peeled. Because I think most people who know me know knows that if I ever put it together, like as far as conditioning, I would be unstoppable. And, you know, my shape is, is crazy. We all know that. But now I, I'm going to bring the conditioning along with it. Um, so here we are almost five weeks out and I'm shredded. Um, my glutes still need to come in, obviously. I need deeper quad separation. But partially I have fat to go. But I also am super flat, too. So it's not pressing against the skin. So I guess I say that to say I have to even tell myself, like, I don't have as far to go as what I think. It's just that a combination of there's more, a little bit more fat to go. And there's also, you know, the muscles not pressing against the skin. So I have to get out of my own head. Um, but uh, but anyway, with that being said, today was kind of tough because, I, you know, was, people who've been through prep notice, you, you take pictures and they just don't look the way that you want it. And it's like, oh, fuck. And I posted them anyway, and I was kind of like, oh, fuck. But then people were, like, going ecstatic about it. That kind of made me feel better. Not to say that. I depend on other people's validation, but the people who matter um, really gave me some positive reinforcement. I'm just kind of in my head right now because, like, the last thing to come in on me is my glutes. And I even said to Tyler, I'm like, man, I, I just don't want to lose my whole physique chasing glutes. And he's trying to assure me that we won't. But, you know, I'm a little conscientious, but I'm going to follow the plan. I'm not going to do anything, deviate. He's he's leading the shit, and I'm going to trust him. Um, thanks for being here. For those of you who made it this far in the video, this video was kind of a Picasso video because it's my first video back, so I know it's a little rough, but I promise it's going to get a little bit smoother, a little bit more well thought out, more methodical, um, so bear with me. I appreciate y'all being patient. Oh, one more thing before I go. Team Undeniable. We are rebranding, restructuring. It was Team Hill. Now we're Team Undeniable, a.k.a. Be Undeniable, a.k.a. You won. Um... And it's self-explanatory, right? But I'm going to kind of go into it. So the the acronym U and literally the number one, U1, um, means you won. If you can master your mentality, you're undeniable. I don't give a fuck what the judges say. I don't give a fuck where you place if you're a competitor. It's about winning the mentality. It's about beating your own mind. If you can do that, then you'll be undeniable. Because more times than not, when we look in the mirror, we, we start filling our head with doubts. If you can look in the mirror and then master that, then you're undeniable to yourself. And that's the only important thing that we need to focus on. So if you want to fucking be hardcore and undeniable, sign up with your boy. If you're ready to work, if you're ready to transform your mind, body, and soul, holler at me. You know what I'm saying? Ready to go to work. I'm going to leave my coaching information in the comment section below. Are accepting clients right now. Um, so chop it up with me. We'll talk price and all that good stuff. But... I'll see y'all next week. Stay up, be undeniable, and you've won. Peace.